You know, television's a wonderful medium, but you can't beat radio sometimes. Just look at this. Look, you see? www.bnradio.co.za. That's a streaming radio station here in South Africa. You can hear good music, good interviews, and a little bit of news, but mostly we entertain. You know, I uh, did a BSc degree because I was very interested in biochemistry. Uh, but those days, you couldn't get a bursary for biochemistry or anything outside of teaching and nursing, etc. And um, so I decided to teach science. And to my surprise, I abs until I could make money and you know go and do uh, do a career in in, in the biosciences, but. Uh, to my surprise, I absolutely enjoy teaching. Um, the ability to see, it's the only profession which you can literally see on a day-to-day -day basis, how you make a difference in the lives uh, of, of people. And I, that became my chosen profession. It's still, to this day, the most highly regarded thing that I believe any human being can do, you know, because it's a combination of public uh, service and, and and preparing the nation, you know, for future generations. So, um, yeah, I got in there partly because I had to and then found out it's the best thing I've ever done. Well, I'm very, very disappointed in what happened since the 90s because that is not what we dreamed. We dreamed about a school system that would be equal, that would be democratic, that would be decent, and that would serve all of our young people, you know, with the same uh, uh, quality of, of education uh, and so on. But that didn't happen. In fact, we have a bigger divide now in education, uh, not so much on race, even though that's still there, but more on, on the basis of class. And so you'd find privileged white and black kids in the better schools, and this mass of largely black kids in the most disadvantaged schools. And when you get into provinces, you know, such as the Eastern Cape or Limpopo, it gets really bad, you know. And none of us expected this. We all expected that there would be good governance, there would be daily teaching, there would be strong leadership in the schools, there would be a liberating curriculum. Those, that was the language, you know, we spoke with. And today we have an absolute mess now. That's one part of the problem. The bigger problem is that those in power the people in charge of the school system, the politicians, don't think there's anything wrong. They, they think they're doing very well. Once a year they do a war dance, you know, around the grade 12 results and pat each other on the back and say, guess what? You know, we've uh, uh, increased the pass rate by a percentage or two, you know. I mean, it is so incredibly dangerous, the self-deception. You know, you can have a problem and then fix it. But if you're telling yourself that it's not really a big problem, then you have the kind of hopelessness you see in South Africa today. I would make sure that as government, uh, we assert our authority over the school system. You can't have a school system, in, especially in the disadvantaged sector, being run and overrun by the unions. That's what's happening right now with Sutton. And, and I believe we should have unions, and I believe unions must protect the rights of teachers, and I believe that's part of a democracy. But what the unions have now done is to not only decide who's going to become a teacher and a principal in a school, but who's going to become a DG in the Eastern Cape and who won't. When a union runs the school system, you know, for its own narrow needs, in which the learning needs of the kids is the last thing on their mind, then you have the kind of crisis you have in South Africa today. I don't know of any country in the world, perhaps, apart from Colombia or Chile in, in, in parts of its dictatorship, uh, you know, where you have this kind of thing and you cannot, you know, rescue a school system when government is too scared because of its political interests, you know, uh, to sort of say, we're in charge of schools. Now, guess what's going to happen? The teachers are going to actually show up every day and they're going to teach every day, okay? And the kids are going to be in the classroom 
and the principals are going to manage the schools, okay? And we're holding you accountable for results because guess what? More than any other African country, we put more money into the front end of education. We don't have that kind of government. Man, I think, you know, there's two or three people who regularly speak out against these things. Dr. Mampela Rampela is, is also, I think, one of those critical voices uh, on, on these issues. But there's very few people, you know, because South Africans are, first of all, scared. You're scared of having your name tarnished, you know, because what the ANC has become very good at is ad hominem attacks. They would attack you as a person. They would completely forget what you said, okay? and undermine you and, 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 and question your integrity and raise issues around your children and, and so on and so forth. You see this with the public protector, Tuli Madonsela. You saw it with Ruel Koza, who made a reasonable statement that we have a leadership crisis. Uh, this is the chairman of Nedbank. So, so people are scared, you know, and it's, not, it's really not nice to have your name rubbish, you know, because you've attacked not any body, but a movement, a government, which is your right to do in a democracy. So yeah, I think sometimes I do feel, you know, I just wish more people would say, you know, this is not good, <laughs> okay. But uh, as I said, we, we, we live in interesting times.